Hi, everybody. I'm Rachel Leonard, Editorial Director of the Bridal Council, and this is Countdown to the Collections. I'm so excited to be speaking today with Rita Venaris, a designer of her own brand, and uh, she does gorgeous bridal gowns, wedding dresses, and beautiful bespoke evening wear. How are you today, Rita? I'm, I'm great, Rachel. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so happy to see you, and I know we'll see all see each other soon in person for market fall winter 2022. Oh my goodness! I know. <laughs> um, I can't believe. You've been in business since 1995. Oh my gosh. And I've known you that long. We go way back. It's incredible. Um, and I'm sure, you know, we, how, how's your brand evolved over the years? I mean, in a, you know, a brief way, tell us, you know, has the girl changed? What do you know? Sure. Yeah, it's hard to believe that I've been doing this since 1995 myself. <laughs> um, you know, the way that, you know, the brand has evolved over the years has been a natural evolution in the same way that, you know, there's been a natural evolution for fashion, society and culture. So when you go back to like 1995, when I started, um, bridal market was a lot more conservative and traditional. Um, but having said that back then, I still was about um, simplicity and modern silhouettes and what I was doing was quite simple and understated yeah, um, you your time. It, yeah but that's that's true to myself so you know um, but having said that you know as much as I love doing bias sheaths and really simple and clean a-line gowns I'm, I did have to adapt a little, little bit and you know take into consideration that Bridal was not as fashion forward as fashion was at that time. So I had to infuse it with a little bit of traditional touches here and there, whether it be, you know, beautifully detailed embroidery and handcrafted beading that went on it, um, just to bring it to that level, um, because the bride was not as accepting. Um, at that time. However, over the years, um, you know, and the way that everything has evolved, um, we've now become a much more fluid society and much more accepting. Um, and it's very reflective of the design overall, whether it's like fashion or bridal. Um, and the great thing is that all of us who design are able now to sort of push the envelope of creativity and take things to another level. Um, and it's great to know that no matter what you design these days, there's always an audience out there for you because everyone is such an individual these days and looking for individual aesthetic um, and you'll see with my designs um, the evolution has been somewhat um, you know maintaining that simplicity that um, I've always had but being able to um, add more embellishment um, add more um, a little bit of you know of a fashion forward edge to what I do which is a lot of fun but it sounds it sounds a lot more fun actually than than back then. I mean, yeah, I mean, and and we have such a diverse way of getting married now more than ever, and everybody is who they really are, and it's it's you know there's there's a new market out there actually. Absolutely. Um, so, so describe the aesthetic for Rita Veneris and Aileen. Um, you have two two collections. Correct. Yeah. So um, aesthetic wise for both collection, it is about being modern and current overall. However, um, there are differences between Ravini and Aline. Um, Ravini is um, iconic gowns that make um, an everlasting statement through basically luxurious fabrications and lavish, lavish fabrications and couture details where Aline is about simple luxury and pure design um, with sort of like effortless silhouettes and fresh styling. Um, Ravini was the first collection and first brand that I launched back in 1995. And Aline was, um, I think she was born in 2009, if I, I hope I recall that correctly. Um, and she's sort of like the younger sister to Ravini. Okay, oh, fabulous. And so you, you've been saying simplicity, but if you had one signature look or you, I mean, I can tell a, a Ravini gown from across the room. I mean, if you're looking at a zillion white gowns, right. um, how would you describe it? Um, I would describe it as understated luxury. It's about, you know, 
the perfect balance between couture details, simplicity, and grandness coming together in a very understated way. But is it like a fit and flare? Is it an architectural neckline? Is it more structured? Or that's... Um, I, right, right. In, in that sense, I would call it um, effortless architecture. Okay, that's... You know, cause, that makes cause as far as the silhouettes, like, you know, I cover a wide range of silhouettes. Um, I have a love for all of them, whether it's like a fit and flare or like a, a beautiful ball gown. Um, but um, as far as the overall aesthetic, there is definitely like architecture in it, but it's it's somewhat fluid and it's it's not stiff or you know harsh. Um, it it wraps the body and envelops the woman's body, um, allowing her own brilliance to sort of shine through and very flattering. Yes, that That's is key. always that is always key when Number you're designing. One. <laughs> Number I'll one. Think Number think that how thin do you look at the hips, right? Or the waist yeah, and all that. Exactly. And how tall can you look? Because I'm I'm only five foot two. So I always think about like, how can I look taller, right? So I always think about making every woman look as tall as possible and as beautiful as possible. That's really good to know because you look tall. I, I wouldn't even even know that you were only five foot <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. So I know you're working away and I don't know if you can share any details of what what uh for fall winter 2022 do you have what's your inspiration for okay well what I can share for fall winter 2022 is that it's inspired um by a new era um where extravagance meets simplicity um there's grandness mixed with simplicity um it's about the fabrications um, and it's about the silhouettes. Um, it's kind of hard to disclose much more. Um, I think everyone's going to have to wait till October 6th to the 8th um, where everything will be unveiled. Okay, excellent. Can't wait. Um, and what, what part of the process do you like the most? Oh, that's a tough <laughs> question because I actually love the entire creative process. I love... Um, from the beginning, from the inspiration point to sort of like um, figuring out and setting the tone of the collection for that season. And then there's more fun that starts when I'm selecting the fabrications. Um, it's always tough editing down what fabrications to choose, I'll be truthfully honest. Um, and then once those are selected, like that whole part of taking each fabric and um, draping it over the forms to see what it really does and putting a sketch to the fabric and then bringing that dress to life. I mean, the entire process is like a lot of fun. So you choose the fabric first and then you sketch. So, so basically, that's interesting. Well, it, it sort of goes, it, it's a back and forth so situation. Back and forth. Yeah. So, so the, the theme is set. Um, there's an overall aesthetic and direction that um, I want to go. And then there's definitely like silhouettes and just like rough sketches that are established to sort of kind of go, okay, this is what we're doing. This is like the kind of fabrics that we want to find, the types of laces that we're looking for. And then it's off to finding those fabrics. And then from the fabrics, once we have those, then it's about, you know, really honing in and just saying, you know, what is the exact style that this fabric lends itself best for? And then we create and design the style, keeping the fabric in mind, because every every fabric has like a different hand, it falls different, it drapes different. So it's key for every design to make sure that it all, you know, kind of gets married together in perfect harmony. That's so interesting. Um, so any advice, style tips for brides out there that you'd like to share? Yeah, my, my one advice that I just repeat myself over and over with is that you need to stay true to your own personal style when you're looking for a wedding dress. Um, there's so much out there, especially these days that a bride can fall in love with and might look gorgeous on someone else. But I think the most important thing is to go out there, be open to the fact that there are silhouettes that you will try on that are not typical that you would wear on a typical basis. But at the same time, um, 
just make sure that when you put that dress on, it makes you feel beautiful inside and out. And you feel like yourself because you want to, you know, when you look back at your wedding pictures, 10, 15, 20, 30, however many years from now, you want to know that you felt like your best self at that point and have no regrets like, oh, why did I wear that wedding dress? Or, oh, why did I listen to blah, 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 who told me to or whatever. So I think it's about just staying true to your own personal style. I think that's a great point. It's just feeling really good. Exactly. Wearing and the beauty of that brings to you or your inner beauty. Exactly. Because like once you get that dress on and you feel great, you know, it's going to basically, you know, show your brilliance. Like it's going to, you'll be radiating that day. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you so much, Rita. I really enjoyed speaking with you today. And thank you everybody for joining us. Thank you, Rachel. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.